guys and today I'm bringing you a review of a movie called Clyde Cooper. It's a 2018 movie um, and before we start off as usual the usual little bits of info about the movie. This one's written and directed by Peter Daskaloff. It stars Jordi Vesaluso, Abby Titmus, Richard Neal, Aria Servetus and Isabella Racco. Hopefully I haven't butchered those names too badly. Okay, so a, a synopsis of sorts. This movie follows a young um, private eye called Clyde Cooper. He's based in Silicon Valley. He t he takes on cases that the police maybe don't deal with. Um, and someone comes to him, a gentleman called Vincent, who is in search of a lady in his life, someone he's fallen big time for, who has just mysteriously vanished. Um, I think she's called Nina. So he asks Clyde Cooper to, to look into this and to find out where this lady has gone. Um, this opens up a whole can of worms. We get into, he comes across a mysterious group of women. Perhaps is Nina in some way involved with these women? Um, it just is very difficult to give you much of a synopsis. There is a kind of supernatural element to this. And when I say supernatural, I don't mean ghosts. Um, one of the ladies in this at one stage in the movie, this is all I will give you, um, is fingerprinted and those fingerprints are seen to be not human. That's all I'm going to give you. So there's a lot more going on than what appears on the surface. The movie comes from a position of trying to be, that maybe gives you a hint as to my viewpoint of the movie, um, like a, like a crime noir type feel. If you've seen Sin City, which is an amazing film, or Max Payne, um, that sort of style of very gritty, husky dialogue that we get, the narration over the top, this movie does that. This movie tries to do that. It goes for that sort of style, that sort of like crime noir type thing. And to me, feels pretty damn miserably. Um, the only real actor we have in this movie is the main star that plays Clyde Cooper. I know he was recently in um, a movie called The Invitation, a horror movie. It's, it's not that old, maybe a year or so old, maybe a couple. Um, he was in that one. The rest of the cast are just very much supportive as far as I'm concerned. Um, he is very misogynistic, makes no secret about it. Any woman that he encounters he, he seems to want to bed. He doesn't but he seems to want to. The flirting is just... it's awful. In parts it was like a really bad porn parody and when I say porn parody I don't mean like rude scenes. I mean the dialogue that you would get in a, in a porn movie where he tells one woman you're so beautiful I would drink your bath water. And she's batting her eyelids furiously at him as he's saying this to her. He's a handsome chap, but he's a cheese ball. It's just full of cheese. Is it trying to be funny? I'm not sure, but it's feeling miserably. It It's not going enough down that road and, and giving us a little look to camera or something to let us know that it's all tongue in cheek. It seems to be played pretty seriously. And for that, honestly... If you can't do it like Sin City or if you can't do it like Max Payne, I'm not talking budget. Obviously those movies are a big budget. I'm not talking about that side of things, but the gritty narration over the top was just painful. It was bad. It was worse than 80s detective shows on telly. It was dated. It was cheesy. It was cringy. Um, I would have switched this movie off within 20 minutes had I the choice. Um, this movie actually started off really promisingly with something happening that really in no way reflects to the rest of the movie. Um, it is something that happens that has to do with the group of young ladies but that particular thing that happens, nothing like that happens again in the entire movie and it's like I think oh this might be quite good. No. Um, Abby Titmus is in this. Um, if you're from the UK you will know her the ex-girlfriend of shamed TV presenter John Leslie. Um, she's a model she gets her boobs out, you know, she's that type of actress and she plays a very straight, plummy English role in this as, um, for want of a better word, the head of these ladies, but she isn't really the head of the lady. It's very difficult to explain without giving too much of the plot, without giving too much of the wafer-thin plot away. Um, 
I didn't like this. I didn't like the acting. I didn't like the casting. I didn't like... The women are all there to look pretty. Um, in saying this, Abby Titmus is a model. She's probably the least attractive woman in this movie. If you want to watch a movie to look at pretty ladies, this is the one for you. There's no nudity in it, so you're not going to get that from it. The male lead is just obnoxious and really irritating and really misogynistic and it's not done in a funny way, which you can forgive if it's funny, but it isn't. It tries really hard to be gritty, to be film noir. It's not. The acting in this is pantomime at best. Um, I've seen better acting in pantomimes I have watched with my child. It's just painful. It's it's. I read a few reviews of this, critic reviews, after having watched it, and in my opinion they are very complimentary to how I would personally be about this one. Um, different people like different things. Different things appeal to different people. I have watched a lot of movies that aren't big budget, that don't have things that the Hollywood movies have, that don't have the, the best acting in, but I find something positive to say about them. There's something to be taken from it, but this movie was just so cheesy, it was just so... It's like, oh Christ, switch it off. It was... It was just like the acting in a porn movie. On It was like a porn movie without the porn in. What's the point of that? You know what I mean? The acting was that bad in this. Um, people have said that the lead's acting wasn't that bad. I didn't think it was any better than any of the rest of them, and they weren't anything to write home about. But, I don't know. Personally, not for me at all. One high point, which I suppose I could mention, if I'm grasping and clutching desperately at straws, um, it raised the corners of my mouth for a moment. We have in this movie a sex addict who has erectile dysfunction. That maybe shouldn't amuse me, but it amuses me. Um, he's in the movie for all of about one minute, if that. Um, that scene itself, if you watch the movie, is the only effective scene that I feel that the movie contains. But a sex addict with erectile dysfunction, who thinks this stuff up? Who thinks this stuff up? I wouldn't waste my time with this. I'm maybe being overly critical. Um, I do watch a lot of movies, I watch a lot of good movies, I watch a lot of bad movies, I watch a lot of average movies. This movie falls slap bang in the middle of the bad pile and for me personally, for my personal preference, this didn't contain anything that I enjoyed. If you enjoy laughing at cheesy, campy, desperate attempts to do a gritty film noir, it's also got the most irritating soundtrack in the world. I think it's meant to be jazz. I don't like jazz anyway. Jazz to me sounds like a lot of notes, not necessarily in the right order. I don't like jazz. <clears throat> People will say, you've got no class. You've got no etiquette, you've got no culture. Perhaps not. This sounds like my son practicing on his keyboard. My son is seven. That will give you an idea. The soundtrack didn't fit. You find yourself getting constantly distracted with it. It was so bad. So there you have it. This is my viewpoint of Clyde Cooper. I did not enjoy it. If I had to rate this one out of 10, I will give it a three for the pretty ladies for I don't even know for what because there isn't there literally isn't anything so have you seen it does it sound like something you may enjoy after hearing me probably not let us know below in the comments and I look forward to seeing you next time